Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. The more that we put the art that comes through us, through God, out into the world, the more you will be protected. And then just know that the lessons that are there, we're literally there for you. Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Evans, welcome back to another episode of Questionably Awesome, where you are my co-host and we answer all of our audience's questions. And it's called Questionably Awesome because you may question if this is awesome, but when you listen longer, you'll realize that it is the humor and strangeness that you have been missing in your life. Now, absolutely, Evans, tell me, tell me, What type of person should be listening to this and what type of person should just shut this right down? Get out of here. All right. Um, (laughs) If you've got a funny bone, then you need to listen to this. (laughs) But if you're... um, I think I have mascara in my eyeballs. Uh, If you you are need like a serious, serious talk and you're you're not laughing today, then maybe don't listen to us today. Yeah. Go to an interview or maybe Mm -hmm. go to a quickie. I don't know. I like to consider myself funny on some of those too, but actually I'm, I'm not. I love your quickies. Well, thank you. I never know what's coming out on those. It kind of just goes like 
you know, by the week. And a couple of the things we were talking about, and I actually think it's like so important for people to hear is that we were discussing how overall we like think that we're happy people, but we really struggle with mood every week. Like when we get on here, it's like, how you feeling? Like it's a check-in and it's like, you know, I'm struggling. Like I'm kind of feeling blue this week, but things are good, but that's just how I'm feeling. And I know for you, it's, it's pretty weather dependent on, you know, what's going on in the weather there because it's pretty gloomy for a long period of time. For me, it's like kind of dependent on if I don't have any space in my schedule, I get a little bit blue. I feel, uh, and it's interesting to like learn those things about yourself the older that you get. You're like, oh, I know I'm going to start feeling this way if I don't give myself a little space. So what do you notice about it? And how do you get out of it? Because I know that so many people listening to this, like they actually listen because they feel that way. Oh, that makes me feel so much better to know that I'm not the only one that struggles. Uh, This morning, I literally, before our podcast, I smiled. Like I stared at my computer and smiled. (laughs) For real. I have done that too. I swear. It is hard to feel sad or negative when your face is smiling like a freak. Like it should be like a... It really is. We should almost force ourselves to try to smile once in a while, like while we're working out or while we're getting ready. It does. It floods your body. It actually... um, it triggers something in your brain and it does change the chemicals that are getting flooded into your body. Like you feel it. Like right now, my eyebrows are real wide. I can do that because I haven't had Botox in a long time. Um, My eyebrows are real up and I've got a big smile and I feel better. Me too. It really does work. And also buying flowers from the grocery store. Uh, Proven. Proven. Proven to work. (laughs) Put them by your nightstand. Carry them around yep. with you like you just want a pageant. It oh helps. Oh my God. Like a baby, like cradled like a baby and walk around your house and just be like, you're welcome, everyone. And just kind of look. <laughs> and wave. Yeah. And make sure you curl your hair so that the ends of the cur- hair is like really curly, just like the ends. Like very, very thick and bob-like. <laughs> Remember the 80s? Like you just wanted yes. to curl the end. Like it was just like, make it curlier and bigger on the bottom. And hot rollers. Did you ever use hot rollers? Did I ever use hot rollers? I carried, I would go to friends' sleepovers with my hot rollers. And I would like get ready and put my makeup on with my hot rollers in. Oh, yeah. I mean, I loved hot rollers. They were literally. I try those again. I don't know. You're, how do you wait? Cause now what's in is kind of leaving the ends out a little bit. Like the thing about hot rollers is it makes those froofy ends. Those total froof. Yeah. They need to come up. I just thought of an invention where the hot roller clips. So picture hair and the hot roller like clips with the ends out. And then you almost start like curling from there. Like maybe the ends come out of the skinny end. Whoever, there's a billion dollar idea for you. Hot roll. Well, probably not because nobody uses hot rollers anymore. You might end up losing money actually. So maybe don't do that. (laughs) People are like, what about a curling iron? That works just as great. Um, it does, but there's just something about hot rollers that bring you back, you know? I know the little things to clip them in. I love, I love the whole experience. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, sometimes, so this morning also gerbils came up. Just, I don't know why we were talking about our brains. And for some reason, we've been mentioning gerbils a lot. Um, yep. So Evans decided to research what the spirit animal of gerbils meant for us. And we think it's really fitting. Gerbils represent, represent aspects of life that are small comforts. And I feel like what I'm doing is trying to cling to small comforts because I'm so uncomfortable in fear all the time that that's why these are coming up. It's like I'm just clinging to my inner gerbils. And I, I, it's almost like I need to overcome it. <laughs> Me too. I feel like we're carrying around a lot of, a lot of gerbils in our pockets. We and are. Trying to let them go. Have you ever tried to get stuff done with like 47 gerbils in each pocket? It's a circus. It's too much. And that's how you my brain let feels. Your gerbils go. You do. And you have to be like, look, this is just a time in your life where you're not going to have 47 comforts in your life. You might get to keep one, but it's probably not even like, it's just not good. Like PETA is going to call if you have too many comforts, you know? Yeah. Too many comforts. Like that's when you're just, you're, you're in a bad spot. You are. That's when you think you're comfortable and when your life is miserable. That's when you're really battling with mood and your higher self for sure. Because you're. Yes. it's funny, the more comfortable you are, the more your higher self is like, hmm, time to fight. So true. <laughs> time to box. Let's do it. Hmm, you haven't been practicing? I have. And she just beats the shit out of your face. 
pretty much. I like don't that's get literally it. how it feels when you don't listen to your higher self. Mm-hmm. Not even your What's face. Your, it's more like your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your quote this week? Yeah. Thanks for changing that subject real quick. Didn't feel like it was going anywhere. Okay. Um, I've got two. It is from one is from TF Hodge. Don't know who this person is, did not do a background check, but they did Me say neither. to conquer frustration, one must remain intensely focused on the outcome, not the obstacle. And I do think it goes along just with the idea that we consistently say on here. Um, and that is about like, what are you actually focusing on? And if you focused on what you wanted instead of what you were afraid of, your life would drastically change. Like catch yourself, catch yourself. Like the, in, there, yeah. there is a moment where, you know, there's moments every single day where your brain is like, um, but this is how I feel. And this is what I'm afraid of. And this is what I don't want to happen. Okay. What do you want to happen? What could this look like? Have you pictured the people who are on the receiving end as being like joyful and happy about, you know, getting whatever it is that you're putting out into the world. And that's what I need to focus on more. Like when light pink goes out, just really focusing on how happy they're going to be, how excited they're going to be to have that experience. And like for you, how excited they're going to be to like read the email and feel connected and all of those things. So true. I don't know why it's so much easier to dwell on the negative. Because we're wired that way. We're not wired to like grow and, you know, go into the wild. We are wired to stay safe from predators. And now our predators are different. Our predators are now like being online. Our predators are like oh, people in no. our life. Like our predators are judgment. But just like take those words that you're so afraid of and slap them on like a giant cougar trying to eat you. And that's literally like how it was. I'd be like, I love I'm your visuals. Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and then just take your little gerbil out of your pocket and give it a little pet. Yeah. And you'll say, I'll be fine. I got this. I'll be fine. I'm petting my gerbil. Get away, cougar judgment. <laughs> That's what I love the most about this is just how many brain cells we can kill for people. You know? I know. No, they don't have any left at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they do, I'm going to attack that one at the end of this. You know, let's go for it. What do you got? Tell me your quote. Okay. I kind of just lost it. So I'm just going to go to one random one from Marie, Marianne Williamson. Um, and you may, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. Mm, I love that quote. And I have a question for you. Okay. Do you think that if you showed up fully Evans, like the Evans that you know you have been since you were a little girl or the Evans that you like get those glimpses of where you're like, damn, I could be like Ellen DeGeneres. Do you think... Are you afraid of what people would say? Oh, uh, yeah. And who is That's that? That's like my worst fear. Who is that, Evans? Who's Big Care Evans? More. Big Evans is more carefree. But why, mm. why, do you, why is that that we're so scared about what people think? Like, no one cares. No one really cares. I don't know if you've had enough practice yet putting yourself out there. I know I'm scared, but I'm less scared because I think it's happened. Like, I've had those moments that really suck. But you yeah. have enough girlfriends and, and Adam and your mom that you would be just fine. Like it would suck for like a day, maybe two days. And then you start to realize like, oh, putting yourself out there, actually there's like such a reward that that little sucky part doesn't matter. Um, and I do think we call in what we need. So the other day I, I put some stuff out that I was like worried about. And of course I got the one comment I was worried about. And I was like, oh, like here's the thing though. Before I put it out, I knew I was putting this particular thing out because I was trying to show up more as the real me. And also mm-hmm. when you do that, you're like, oh God, but what are people going to think? I'm going to let their expectation down of what they think I am. And, uh, you know, th- right after I did it, like the day after, of course, I went on my phone in the morning, which I should not be doing. I'm kind of in a bad habit right now that has to break. Um, me too. Oh, it's, I don't know how I got into it. I think it's like the last couple of weeks I need to break it. So you and I will have to hold each other accountable. Um Yes. So with that said, I woke up to this comment that I was like, oh, I literally imagined this. Like I literally pictured it. And when we picture what's going to happen, we know it's like a prayer for it happening. It's like asking for it to happen. And so I was like, wait, this isn't bad. I actually called this in so I could experience my worst fear and then I could just get over it. So now it doesn't have to be my worst fear anymore. So when you picture it that way, like, okay, you know what, I will probably call it in so I can experience it and know it's not going to take me down. So 
I just, mm-hmm. that's how I look at things now. Like, oh, I called this in for me. Awesome. How do we work through it? Cool. Now I'm not afraid of it. You know? Yeah. I love that. That's so huge. If and it, when it happens to you, give me a call, shoot me a text for real. We'll jump on the phone. We'll okay. cry. We'll call the person a total a hole. And then we'll say, God bless and release them and send them love. You know, and love like, and how light. can you love your enemy? Because if you can't love your enemy, you're not going to be able to love anything or anyone else. It just takes a while to get there. And I find that swearing helps. I totally agree. And I think it's a weird, like there's a weird climate out there right now where people get canceled so easily. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, like for me, I get scared of like, what if I say the wrong thing or do something bad? And everyone's like, that's terrible. I don't know. I feel like we just got to get But everybody has come place. back from it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even the people who were quote unquote canceled, like they're going to be okay. And they may have called that in. Maybe it was for them, you know? And Mm -hmm. and as bad as that sounds, like I definitely had a really rough experience around my book and I wouldn't have wished it on my worst enemy. And at the same time, it was like, okay, like you just come, you come back from it. You say what you, you take your time to decide what your reaction is going to be. And you really think on it. You don't, that's the thing. You don't react right away. You res- you give yourself time to respond. You know, I truly believe that you like God is good. He's not gonna let he's not gonna let a human cancel your life. Like yeah, you can come back from anything. And I think that the more that we put the art that comes through us through God out into the world, the more you will be protected. And then just know that the the lessons that are there were we're literally there for you. And I just, you know, I think that's the only thing that keeps me from showing up all of the time is like, I really believe that to my core. Like, I think faith is when you, when you believe, when you hold that belief. So I think for you, like, just remember, like, you'll never, if you hold that faith that you'll get through it and you'll be protected and you're protected by something bigger. The fear is that we're, we have to do it alone and we're just not doing it alone. So I think when you tap into that, that's when you're like, okay, I know that no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. It's like for the greater good and it's going to grow me and it's going to like reveal something to you on the other side. So it's not fun. I mean, nobody's like getting in line for spankings, you know, unless it's your birthday and you're at a strip club. Could be fun (laughs) if that's your thing. That's totally fine. But I've never been like, ooh, we're getting this shit spanked out of us over there. Sign me up. You're dropping some good truth bombs this morning. You know, I don't know what, (laughs) I don't know about that, but it's just, I, the reason why I like get off on tangents is because it's, it hits a nerve with me and it's for me. Like I, I essentially just coached myself because I'm always afraid. I am like always so afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. And oh my God, I'm so responsible for people now and for their things. And like it, it, there is an amount of, there is required trust that happens when you, when you do big things, when you live into your higher self. And, you know, I think it's just like remembering that your higher self speaks your truth and speaks the actions you should be taking. And then your stupid lower self who is going to make you miserable, like we talked about last week, is going to come in and try to, you know, they're the ones working out all day. Like we need to make sure our higher selves are the ones working out because our lower selves come in and they're like, yeah, I've been in the boxing ring. They like know how to take your higher self down real fast. They so do. And it's because we're not giving enough attention to our higher self. We're like, you stay here and get a nice massage. Like the, what's that? Wagyu beef. And what happens is Wagyu beef gets eaten. <laughs> we need to get that <laughs> beef in the true. ring. We need to send that beef to the gym. That's the best beef. Anyway. <laughs> do you want to review of the week? Please. God, save me. Oh my God. This is from Motivation Nation. Motivation Nation is about to just make our day. Okay. First of all, the title is Magical Little Nuggets. Uh, yeah. New, new thing they're serving at McDonald's. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> if McDonald's was magical. Um, she says, Maury and Evans drop magical little nuggets of wisdom in their questionably awesome episodes, but don't get it twisted. They don't take themselves too seriously. Literally, this is my favorite dose of humor, inspiration, and just pure ridiculousness every week. <laughs> These gals are my kind of people. Mara Kassler. Oh my God. 
Mara? Mara? Or is it Mara? Mara? I don't know. I, I kind of like Sia Tamara. Like that's yeah, fine. Mara. Yeah. Like if she hasn't used that I love that, that name. Yet. Yeah. Mara. That's amazing. Mara, we love you. Um, we're just going to yes. picture all of our podcast from here on out with you sitting at the table because we like to make people laugh. So we're going to picture you laughing on walks and stuff. Okay. Thank you so much for that review. I literally love our reviews because it proves <laughs> that there's a listener out there. There's you know? one of you. Thank you, Mara. She's one of our two downloads. Um, <laughs> all right. Do we have a cue? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. This is from Caitlin Moss. Kate Moss, are you kidding me? She was like Kate the Moss, the model. model ever. <laughs> um, I know she listens. She's she listens. I have some problems with my self esteem being a good mom and working at my dream job, but I feel that mom guilt and the guilt is heavy. What do I do? Oh man, I'm not a mom, but I literally just heard this. Um, you know, I follow Lauren Bostick on Skinny Confidential, and she was like, "Man, I just never thought I would feel bad about." like working because she's obsessed with her work. She just did a post on this. And it really made me wonder like, wow, am I going to, you know, in the future when I have kids, when I'm like 62, who knows? That's the way it's going. Um, I'll still have them though. I'll still figure it out. Um, (laughs) And I I feel great about it, everybody. No worries. I feel really good about where I'm at with that. Um, (laughs) With that said... Yeah, she put a post out that was like, I, I just didn't think I would feel this way because she loves what she does. But she's like, there's the just, you know, this insane amount of mom guilt because she feels like she's missing those moments. And I was really sitting thinking, will I feel that way? And I'm sure that I will. Like right now, I was like, right now I'm like, no, I'll probably have someone really help me during the day and you know, go to work. And, and I am going to do that. Like I literally yeah. will because I know that that's such a huge part of me. But I'm sure that I will experience that too. And, you know, I was talking to... um I actually had an interview with Gabby Reese, the pro volleyball player. Do you remember her? <gasps> what? <laughs> You're going to love this interview too. I know it's funny. Like I mentioned her to somebody uh, or I mentioned her to um, Lauren, my assistant. She didn't know who she was. Yeah. And I was like, damn it. It's when you know you're getting older, you know? Um, but I'm like, how do you not know? She's freaking amazing. Shout out She's to Lauren. I love you anyway. You know, I'm obsessed with you. It's fine. I'm going to make you watch every single... Gabby Reese reel that there ever was. Um, And then you're going to love her. Anyway, back to the question. She was talking about how like it's, you know, because she was talking about just work and embracing the suck and and that if you can't embrace the suck, you're probably not cut out to be um, like an entrepreneur or an athlete or a human. Like it really Mm -hmm. just came down to like, we categorize it like that's bad over there. Feeling bad is bad. And she's like, if you want to have a good life, you need to you need to know it's all a part of it. Every single fabric of life is like it's all woven together. And the thing is is people with lives that don't they don't like their life, they essentially say they label it. That is bad, being scared is bad, feeling uncomfortable is bad, having someone say something to me that's uncomfortable is bad, having someone judge me is ba- none of it's ba- it's all a part of it. So if we started to say well, that's a part of it and stops living in what we thought was bad. We live in those moments that we judge as bad and that becomes your entire scope of life. And so I think that if you look at it as, oh, mom guilt is a part of it. And thank God you have that because if you didn't, that might mean you hate your kids. I don't know. Like yeah, it'd be like, like if, if you, you get married guilt, and you're, you're like, awesome. oh, what does it say that I don't ever miss my husband and I like when they're gone? I mean, it might say you're not meant for each other anymore. So I think that maybe having the mom guilt, if you reframe it like, wow, I love these little nuggets so much that I I just miss the crap out of them, even though they're annoying, you know, when I'm gone. <laughs> and it's I think so embracing true. that is like, oh, that really shows that I love them and that's all a part of it. And I, I'm going to re-listen to this when this happens because I find it really funny. Like I'm giving mom advice. Like, but now I have a pet that I hate leaving and I can't tell Damn. you even that's not the same. So we're not going to go there. Um, but I, I'm not a mom either, obviously, but I would like to be someday. And I will say, I feel like there, I just have this view in my mind like, oh, there must be like a standard rule book on how you should be as a mom, but there's not. And children are ways raised in a million different ways and they all become these amazing people from various circumstances. Like my dad worked all the time and I hardly saw him, but I still felt very like supported and loved by him. Yeah. Even though he yeah. wasn't there, like you can still support and love your kids 
in a million different ways. You know, if we really think of like, because I'm I'm really into just the idea that we kind of choose our our parents, you know, and and who knows if that's true or not. I like the idea because it makes me feel better about a lot of things in life. Um, not not that my parents were bad. It's just li- they're amazing, and I'm so grateful for the childhood that I had. It shaped me. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without it. Um, but I think that can really help you like, okay, well, this is the woman that I am. This is the the person, the parents that we are. And if you really are like doing your best and making sure you are fulfilled and happy, um, and, and I'll, I want to talk about that in one, one second, um, because I can speak from the perspective of being a daughter. Um, I think that, you know, it, let's just say your child is choosing to come through you because maybe they are meant to be partially raised by, you know, this other person or the grandparents, or maybe that's really truly what they called in is they need a lot more people, or maybe for the life they're about to live and the journey they're about to go on, they need to be a lot more independent, you know? So it's really like, you don't know if that's a really important part of the, you know, the, the journey that they're on is to be more independent and not have to have you all of the time. So it's like really interesting when you look at it that way, like, you know, maybe they're meant to be raised more as more of, you know, tribal, like we used to be or whatever that looks like. Yes. And like get really, not that children aren't well-rounded if they're not, but it does, it is, you become more well-rounded faster if you have grown up around a lot of different people, right? And you get a lot of different insights and perspectives um, and experiences with those people. So I do think that that is powerful too, if we can view it that way. And I will say, and I talk about this at Bliss Project a lot, is the biggest gift that my mother could give me now and could have given me, and I think all mothers to all you know, daughters or par- children, mm-hmm. is to be fulfilled and happy and model that and see what that looks like. And I, I don't believe that that is just being a nurturer um, because we're many things, right? Like that's We have so many things we have to do. And so... I know for you, Evans, like there's nothing worse. And for me, there's nothing worse than when, when your mom is unhappy and you can't help her. It's like, you yes. feel like the most helpless child in the whole world. And it's the realization that like, you can't make her happy either. And that is a horrible place to live. So I do think if you can remember to model what fulfillment and happiness looks like, like I, I kind of get jealous of the people whose parents are like, they, they're doing all the things and going all the places. And they're like, you know what, honey, I love you, but I got to go because you know, I've got, whatever class over here and I'll tell you all about it and whatever that looks like. So I want, you know, I do want to be like that so that I have really great value to add, even if I'm like forcing myself to go and do things. I think everything you just said was so beautiful. I loved everything about it. Oh man. Thank you, Evans. I just love love talking to you. I think that you bring out my, my best, which is why I literally love doing this podcast with you. Well, I think it's so neat to think about, um, your children is like their place exactly where they're supposed to be and how the universe... I just think that's such a a neat thought. Mm, Neat, neat, neat. That's so neat. That's (laughs) neato. We need to bring neato back because I used to use it all the time. So I think instead of cool, like, because that feels out too. So why not make it really out? Like, I think I want to start being known as saying neato. Kind of like how... (laughs) What is it on Seinfeld when George Costanza was trying to get a nickname? He was trying to make everybody... He wanted a cool nickname. He was trying to get everyone to call him T-Bone. And so he kept saying like, yeah, like he kept on using it. Like he he was using it like he was calling himself T-Bone. And instead yeah. he got a different name. It was a horrible name. I can't remember what it was, but they were like, yeah. I'm going to have to watch They this. called a coworker T-Bone instead. So in one meeting, they ended up calling his enemy T-Bone and him like hamburger patty or something ridiculous. <laughs> it was really funny. So I do think I'm going to try to make Neato stick and potentially even a really cool nickname for myself. Let's work on it. Okay. You think of what you want for next time because I like a nickname is so cool. It's so very 80s, but I think they're really cool. Yeah. I and do maybe too. We'll, we'll turn an Instagram handle into it. All right. Do you want another one? Um, yeah. We got time for a quickie. Okay. Um, oh, this is from Michaela Slade. How do you maintain focus and avoid overwhelm when you've got multiple projects on the go? Oh, I'm the worst person to ask for this. Um, uh, I like letting you know, though, that I'm with you. So there's my answer. Um, You know, I, I think that compartmentalization can be learned as women, the way that we think our brains have been compared in this way. So men, let's picture our computer screen. So men, um, you know, 
put in a website, the site comes up, they read what they need, and then they click out of it and it goes away. What we do is we're like, oh, let's look at what's going on on this blog. Oh, what's for sale? Oh my God, let me read about the news. And every single screen is open and that's how our minds typically work. And we're meant to work that way so that we can see if our kids are touching a hot stove while we're cleaning the house, while we're cooking, while we are also like, I don't know, having a conversation coaching our sister-in-law. So Crazy. it's it's how it's meant to be so that we pick up on those details. So like our kids aren't wandering off and, and feeding wolves, you know? So <laughs> you have to remember it's important, but you can compartmental... Like when you get into work mode, you can compartmentalize and go, what project is most important and is going to move the needle? And do that the night before. So what I've been doing is... Um, Lauren and I, my assistant, have been putting the most important things for the next day on sticky notes. And we don't do, we try not to do too much else before those sticky notes get done. Um, so I think it's it's knowing, like, just pick one. And if you can't figure it out, pick one and focus and be like, okay, I'm not going to look at the other things. I'm going to let those fires burn. I think a really good entrepreneur starts to learn that fires will be burning at all times. Um, but pick the ones that like, you know, this one's most important because if it burns too long, I'm going to lose this person. Um, you know, I need to have this conversation or, you know, we're not going to make money if I don't do this one over here. So even though this website, you know, refresh feels important, it's not because the website's still yeah. making money. You know, I don't need a new logo. I don't need to be posting on social right now if you have money making things that are a lot more important that need to come first. So everything feels urgent. Um, but it's not. So you have to decide what to compartmentalize. And it it does get better, um, but it takes some serious learning. And sometimes I talk to myself out loud. Like I'm just like, that's not, that's not the most important right now. This is. So I'm like, out of sight, out of mind. You have this on a note. I'm putting this right here because you know that this gets done in the next couple of days. It's still over here. I can tell I know it's there. So I'm not gonna forget about it. But here is where your focus goes. So I, I kind of like talk to myself and coach myself as if an external person is coaching me so that I like, it just, it really helps actually. It totally helps. So I love that. And I was on a Zoom with Lauren and saw y'all sticky po- post-it <laughs> system and it's so good. It's such a good visual. It's working for us right now. So we said, we're going to do this until it stops working. Um, but for now it's working really well. So we still have it on the computer. We have it in Asana, but we need an actual physical thing to be like, this is today's, you know? And it's always in my it's always in my view and it's really helpful. So Evans, any last wisdom that you want to drop on us? Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Oh God, that's so good. You guys heard it here first. You've never heard it, but uh, actually it's probably no one of the biggest things that. that we need tattooed on our arms for sure. Cause it's like, it's the thing. I'm not doing yes. anything in life without asking. I'm asking questions about 10, 20, 30, 40 times a day. Um, and I just wouldn't move forward. I would, but it'd be so slow that I would never, ever, ever have a business. So if you guys aren't asking for help, it means that you're stuck because of your own self. So there you go. (laughs) I'm again, talking to myself. So I'm taking, you know what? I just released a gerbil. (laughs) One little gerbil is free now. It just scattered away. It's scattered into the woods and it's like, thank God I'm going to my family. (laughs) (laughs) Release it. Okay. All right, you guys, okay. until next time, be questionably awesome. Evans, thank you. I adore you. I thank love this you. time together. Until next Me time, too. peace be with you. Goodbye. Also with you. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest thought and honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. 
but a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about, or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori. Hey, do you know what the big secret is this year? And it shouldn't be a secret because this should be your biggest focus. It is building your community. I am always working on building and nurturing my community and everyone is talking about the power of community without an online community you just cannot grow organically or create a real movement which is what i know that we're all after and you can build trust or monetize your audience when you get community right not only does your audience grow faster but so do your sales but where's everybody going to be managing their communities these days and a lot of online entrepreneurs and thought leaders are turning to circle dot so circle is an all-in-one community platform it lets you host content and create discussions live streams group chats and memberships all under your own brand and what's so cool about circle dot so is that you don't even need a website or facebook group instead circle lets you build your own community site where you can host content and manage your members you can even create locked and unlocked content spaces groups and classes how freaking cool is that you can put your content behind a paywall too and you can charge different amounts of money for different spaces on your community site circle.so is famously easy to use and it has a free 14-day trial for you so you can go check it out see if you like it see if you love all the options just go to circle.so go check it out right now you guys imagine being able to manage your community start group chats and live classes and accept payments all in one place kind of mind-blowing since this is usually spread all over the place you have to log into so many different things if this is the year to capture organize and monetize your community head over to circle.so you can get a free trial and start building your online community right now just go to circle.so you guys you get the 14 day free trial so just go and see if it's for you it's going to streamline everything and make your life so much easier it's so freaking cool Hey all, I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton. And it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight 
fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it.